So I'm starting the beginning of my gallery hop with Derek Forjour's exhibit, Self Must Die at Petzl. And honestly, I've been looking forward to this exhibit since Petzl announced that they were representing Derek back in April of 2019. So it's been a long time coming and it's finally here and this exhibition did not disappoint. This area is titled Vestibule and it's featuring a church pew and it celebrates black funerary tradition. The paintings in this part of the exhibit represent the inevitability of death, depicting kind of multiple ways in which the black community has been struck by tragedy, whether that's through police violence or the pandemic. Forjour as an artist has always felt a connection to death, but usually in a more meta form that's not as obvious to us. He's experiencing death of ego and a responsibility to use art as a form of awareness. And Forjour has always been known for creating these works of colorful, textured layers of newspaper and paint. So at first glance, you know, they really appear to be fun and approachable, but they're always tackling a much deeper, darker subject, and he's just making it more palatable for the audience they can better understand. Our next stop is Sue Williams' exhibit at 303 Gallery. And Sue Williams is an American artist, and this is actually her 11th exhibit with the gallery, which is super impressive. And her most recent paintings are critiques of the American power structures. And in her work, she's questioning, like, how did America get to where we are now? So if you look closely, you can see she's referencing images from colonial times, think pilgrims and cabins and horses with blinders on, and she's making the statement that America has really been founded on violence and manipulation, so I guess we shouldn't be too shocked at what's happened over the last four years with the Trump administration.
now headed over to the East Village to check out a few shows, starting with Eva Press and Huber Gallery. And this is Chabalala Self's exhibit, Cottonmouth. And it's her first show actually at Eva Press and Huber. And it was my first time seeing her work in the US, which is kind of ironic because she was born just up the street in Harlem. And in Self's work, she creates these characters, as you can see, that really hold so much power over their self-presentation and their external perception. They're just oozing self-confidence. And this is really important for her to depict because it's often a power that's frequently denied to black Americans in their daily lives. What I also love about her work is that they're marrying paint and fabric and thread. They're literally stitching together images, creating memory and character. The title Cotton Mouth references America's dark past with slavery and the fact that cotton production was only made possible through black Americans' labor and sacrifice. So Cotton Mouth is speaking to black American history. And Chabalala states, I was thinking of the importance of oral history and diaspora as a way to carry lessons, information, or historical events to the next generation. Next stop, we're at The Hole to see Alex Gardner's exhibit. And this is his second solo exhibit with the gallery. And in this one, he transitions away from his traditional all black figures in favor of this all blue color palette. And by depicting these figures in blue, Gardner is allowing the viewers to identify with the subject matter, sort of regardless of their race. In a gallery statement, the whole states, the paintings on view in blue are utterly personal yet thoroughly depersonalized. In this way, they're also generous. The avatar's emptiness becomes an opening for hope, encouraging us to see what we share instead of dwelling on the ways that we differ.
In our final step of the day, we are exploring the works of Louise Fishman at Karma Gallery. And this exhibit is titled Ball in the Jack, which means going really fast or doing something really quickly or going rogue, if you will. And Fishman is such an iconic female artist. She's part of the abstract expressionism movement and she's a queer feminist Jewish woman, which is a winning combination in itself. And in her works, as you can see here, she brushes in an almost geometric pattern, giving an underlying order to the abstractness and the chaos. all for today if you enjoyed this video please be sure to subscribe to my channel i put out videos at least every thursday i've been trying to put out more now that we're approaching the holidays so that everyone has a few more things to entertain themselves with mm -hmm.